Hi everybody, it's absolutely fantastic to be joined today by Bill McFarlane, who's the chairman of Pink Elephant Communications. And Bill has a, a fantastic uh, pedigree working with the BBC and is really a communications expert. And Bill is gonna share some best practices today around um, online communication, communicating brilliantly well in this online world. So Bill, over to you. Thanks, Andy. There are three big things that I believe are crucial when you're communicating online. Be seen, be heard, and be understood. So let's take the be seen bit first of all. Clearly what's different about this is we're speaking through a contraption, through a machine, to our team or our clients or beyond that. And we've got to get the lighting right. Now, the easiest thing is to have your window there and you there, so you're facing the window. But of course, that's a different setup from the way offices are normally set up. Is there space to put your laptop there? Unusual if that's the case. So you have a setup here where I've got natural light there, uh, but what I've done here is I've got a, a light attached to the computer, and if I switch that off, you'll see I'm now badly lit, one half of the face is lit and so on. So I'm balancing the light. So it's really important, the presentation of it, to be seen clearly. Light's one thing, but your distance from the camera, so you're filling it. Imagine you're watching a TV presenter, which is what I did for over 20 years. You want your head almost to be up at the top there, head and shoulders in shot, dress for a meeting. I'm smart, casual if you like today, that's the way I believe I should be presenting to my clients normally. And I'm making sure that I'm close enough that I can use my hands if I want to be animated, but you're really seeing my facial expression. Also, Andy, you'll see I'm talking to the camera. Therefore, when I talk to the camera, I'm talking to you on the other end, or as many participants as there are. But one of the things you'll see in TV interviews done this way at the moment is many people speak down to the picture in the monitor. So they're seldom looking up there, they're looking there all the time. So look to the camera when you're talking, look to the person when you're listening to what they have to say so you can watch their body language. So that's number one, be seen. Now be heard. I'm sitting at about 15 inches, you know, less than a third of a meter away from the microphone set up here. You've got headphones on, I sometimes use them as well, sometimes they fall out, but it's a way of making sure that I'm being heard. But to be heard, I also need to enunciate, and I also need to project. But I also need to go more slowly than normal, because people are listening carefully to what you're saying. Regardless of what accent we have, and we all have different accents, all we have to do is go slowly and be loud enough for people to hear what we're saying. I'm speaking at about three words a second just now. That's the pace at which I wrote for the news when I was reading the news and presenting the news on the BBC in the UK. So that's the rate at which we believe an audience can properly absorb what we're saying and understand it. And that's my third point, be understood. We often get too confused in all the things we want to say in a presentation or a conversation like this. But I believe it's down to what's in it for the audience. What's the most crucial thing when you set out to do a call, ask yourself, what do I want to achieve? What are the key things I want to get across? What reaction do I want to evoke? So as Dr. Stephen Covey wrote in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, begin with the end in mind. Know what you want to achieve. Then you've got to keep the language simple, keep the points simple, prioritize them so you get to the point early on with what's in it for them, and make sure the other contributors are also briefed and clear what they're doing. And finally, on the being understood part, I would say, make sure that if you're the person organizing the call and chairing the call, you exert the discipline to start it in time and finish it on time, and to make the contributions of the right kind of length that you're looking for. You are like the TV presenter or anchor, throwing to different reporters in different studios or outside broadcasts. You're asking for contributions, but ultimately you have to finish when the program's finished. So a half hour meeting should finish in half an hour. An hour meeting should finish in an hour. My experience of these calls in the last few weeks is they're shorter than face-to-face -face meetings. And that's because people need to be better prepared in the first place. 
So just taking that to the next stage, Bill, one of the things I believe certain remote teams are struggling with a little bit at the present time is really um, connecting and engaging. So how do you make sure that it's not a monologue? Whoever's presenting is speaking. And how does that person become really skilled at, at bringing others into the, con into the conversation? I remember doing some training in this, Andy, when you were at Royal Bank of Scotland in the UK and one of your teams in Birmingham raised that very issue. And she felt that her half hour audio call in the morning, people were emailing and texting and doing other things. They were losing interest. Well, imagine you had a half hour program to present and create. What you need to do is bring it down into bite sized chunks. Make sure you have contributions from just different people and make sure they keep to time. And what you want to do is brief them on what you want to get out from it. You then want to explain what I've just been explaining about good lighting, good audio, keeping your enthusiasm up. And if you bring it into smaller chunks, it's as if you're going from one story to another story to another story. They all need to be connected, but if they're broken down into different speakers and they're all doing it well, that maintains the interest of the audience. I mean, this is why in a half hour TV news program, rather than just having one newsreader for half an hour, you have different reporters making different contributions. You need to mix it up like that. And you need to make sure that people have put the work in to do it. Because again, in my experience, Andy, people get so busy with their daily work that they forget to put time into their communication skills. If you put time into that, then what you want to get across will come across much, much better. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. And um, I believe communication is such a fundamental part of leadership. And I believe it's, it's an ongoing journey that we all need to constantly refine and improve our communication skills. And using the right language is so important to that. And a final question, Bill. There's many people here in Australia and across my audience around the world who are yet to really understand what is a pink elephant? Right, so if I said to you, don't think of the Eiffel Tower, you'll see the Eiffel Tower. So if I say to you, don't think of a bright pink elephant, you will see a pink elephant. So our pink elephants are about identifying when people start drifting into negative language, like I can't meet you face to face, I won't be able to travel to see you because of a lockdown. Uh, I won't be able to get these figures by next Friday. And so that becomes defensive language. If we spend our time telling people what we can't achieve, but all we're doing is instead is we're painting a, a picture of the very thing that we wanted to avoid. We see the Eiffel Tower when we say, don't think of the Eiffel Tower. And especially it comes across if people are feeling vulnerable. So they might say, look, I, I'm not trying to be awkward, Andy, but I can't get you the figures in time. All I can think of you is that I'm now being awkward, you see? So yeah. what we do is concentrate on what we have done, what we are doing, and what we will do. So what you'd say is, now because of the lockdown, I'm going to email you the figures rather than come to discuss them with you. So because of the restrictions on travel, I'll be unable to fly to the meeting. What I'll do instead is a Zoom call. So tell people what you are doing instead of what you're not doing. Now that has one consequence. It leads to us getting to the solution rather than being stuck in the problem. Anything that starts can't, won't, don't, shouldn't, haven't is the problem. But anything that starts what I will do, what I have done, what I am doing is the solution, which is a much better way to run your business. Absolutely. So Bill, uh, that is absolutely fantastic as always. Um, I'm really excited to be working with you over a series of, of these Q&As. So um, I'm, I'm really excited and looking forward to the next instalment. So am I. Thanks for your time. Pleasure.